Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's great to see you all here and thank you for coming. Today, I'm looking forward to discussing with each one of you uh, the topic uh, managing team dynamics and motivation skills. And well, uh, after all the kookiness and unpredictability of 2020, we all are definitely looking for some sort of positivity, right? And uh, I think of manifestation, manifestation as in the clarity, as bringing something tangible uh, into your life through attraction and belief. So for today, all, uh, all I have to say is that ask for what you want and be prepared to get it. Ask for what you want and be prepared to get it. And always remember the power of concentration is the only key to the treasure house of knowledge. So to Ma begin slide, with, so. yes, to begin with, uh, the quote for uh, today, I actually have two because uh, the session is divided into two phases, like the first is team dynamics and the next one would be motivation, right? So all the topics in a way are interlinked, but we're just trying to create a line of demarcation, a bifurcation to get more clarity when we actually experience certain similar things. First one by Henry Ford, coming together is beginning, staying together is a progress and working together is success. This basically highlights the essence of working in a team. Given by Henry Ford, we know who's Henry Ford, Ford Motors, and he is a chief developer of the concept of assembly line technique in the mass production, in operation management, basically. Next, uh, so this, this basically highlights of how we can grow together, right? Next uh, quote is on um, motivation, which says that inspiration does exist, but it must find you working by Picasso, the famous Spanish painter. Uh, this highlights on our action and intention and intention without action and action without intention. Uh, they actually complement each other, right? So we need to understand that they go hand in hand. So in order to yield results, in order to get the desired, desired results, in order to see yourself growing, you have to act, okay? Now I have a story for each, uh, like for all of you. This is a football game. So it's a very, uh, this story starts like the back, background is it's a very sunny day, yellow rays of the sun, and it's a very bright sunny day. And it's a day when you can play football. So there are this there, there is this group of boys who decide to play this game and uh, everyone decides to bring uh, some item from related to the game from their uh, from their houses so what happens is that there is an ambiguity as in how to select the team so what they do is they get in the items like one one uh, one gets the gloves one is getting the goal post and the other one gets the the chalking mar the markers for uh, like the chalks and uh, somebody gets uh, all the like different items related to the game. They get it from their house. Now, like I said, there is an ambiguity in choosing the team. What happens is that they decide that uh, uh, when we start playing it, the moment we uh, get rid of an item, uh, we will be able to zero down that this uh, this item is important or not. So first they get rid of the whistle. They think they say that we don't need the whistle because uh, the referee can shout. Uh, instead of blowing the whistle for any penalty or any uh, injury that has to be highlighted. Then uh, they get rid of the gloves. They say that the goalkeeper does not need gloves. Let's get rid of it. We don't need it. Next, they get rid of the goalpost and they replace it with the with bins. And then they get rid of the ball, the football. And they say, they say that we can play with the tin, like we don't need the ball. Now, there was a father-son duo who was watching them play. He says that, uh, they, they, this, the father says to the son, see how well they are playing, but uh, it's all in vain. This will not result in anything because they are not, they do not have the desired equipment. Then one of the team members, he eavesdrop, he listens to them and says that uh, we are acting like fools, like we have everything, but still we are not playing with them. Instead, we are, you know, uh, uh, we have uh, given priority to our ego rather than the skills that we have and uh, the, actually we want to enjoy the game and we have actually ruined it all by our ego ego is eliminated growth opportunity so what they do is they decide to bring in all the equipments keeping their ego aside and they enjoy the game so this is how you, you know a team should be actually you should not like yesterday also we understood conflicts will be there we have to work along with that we have to think of a midway 
right? Rather than like, you have to understand how trivial and how important it is to discuss things. So on the basis of that, on the basis of such, situa such situations, you have to act. Okay, great. And uh, I hope you understood the moral. The moral is that uh, keeping, you have to understand the essence of how beautiful you can look by just working in a team. I shared a video with you, uh, the rabbit and the the hair, the hair and the tortoise, the revised version of that story. I hope you've all, all gone through it. It's a very short, beautiful video, which also highlights on how important it is to enhance each other's skills rather than pulling the other person down. Because in that entire process, you are also looking dirty. And we don't want that. Okay. Okay. Great. Moving on to the next slide. It's not moving. <clears throat> Wait. The next topic is, yeah. Together, uh, TEAM is basically an acronym which stands for Together Everyone Achieves More. Now, the objectives for today's session is understanding what is TEAM dynamics, the effectiveness model, and then what makes a TEAM effective or defective, theories of motivation. What are TEAM dynamics? Anyone has an, anything to share before I go ahead with uh, my inputs of what, 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 is, what is a TEAM? What do you mean by TEAM dynamics? Anyone? Would like to type it out in the chat box? You can. Anybody? Okay. So team uh, basically is about uh, two or more people working in a team, understanding each other's relationship in a team, and like uh, communicating well, as in understanding the goals of the team, the objectives, so that you can increase the overall efficiency and productivity of the organization. Why are certain organizations well known and others are not? Because they have something. I'll be highlighting it, but I have some issue with the, the arrow key. It's not moving forward. Okay. A group of people working together towards a common goal and relationships between a member of a group that are assigned connected tasks within a company. Now, just for an example, even in uh, like, for example, in your workplace, you have different teams. These teams work together. They have certain objectives, irrespective of how many conflicts or mismatch in the wavelength is there. You have to work towards the organizational objective in order to create a name for the organization. And every organize, uh, every member in the team has different roles as per their capabilities. Like if you all know that uh, whenever, uh, you know, a job is circulated, whenever there is a job listed, uh, there are different uh, responsibilities for different individuals, depending. So on the basis of that, a team is diverse in nature, but their goals, is uh, they have a common goal of uh, achieving that is the team goal and then ultimately the organizational goal is achieved. Types of a team. Now, when I talk types of a team, I hope you are clear with what is a team. Team is basically together, everyone achieves more, wherein we focus on how we can work together in harmony, unity, in union, as in to achieve the goals of the organization. And in a way, we can also achieve our individual goals, our career development. We can have a word with our seniors, as in what uh, what is missing in my profile, what more I need to add. You can definitely think about upskilling yourself and organizations also provide on-the-job training. On-the-job training is given, sessions are there. So it depends. You can always discuss and grow with, within like, with the, uh, while working, while on being on the job. Now, the first one is problem solving team. These teams are basically comprised of five to 10 members. And these are temporary in nature. Uh, temporary as in they uh, are basically formed during the time of crisis, like in time of any emergency you want. Any quick example, if anyone has for problem solving team, if you could think of. Exactly. Team is a group. Yes, team is a group, right? A different people in one team. Exactly. Diverse, versatile people in one team. So you have to understand how to use the caliber of uh, the team to uh, actually prosper. Technical teams. Yes, absolutely. Very good. Technical teams. So for example, during the COVID period, 
right during the covid period we had remote teams we were uh, remote teams are also an example of virtual teams like they basically rely on digital they really basically rely on technology so yes technical teams uh, during the time of uh, the covid like i said during inflation like to deal with a certain emergency or uh, crisis like situation you have problem solving teams the next one that we have is cross functional team it's okay cross functional team basically what happens is that uh, you have uh, members from uh, different teams but they belong to the same hierarchical level okay same hierarchical level but uh, they are from different teams the the problem is that the maximum uh, dysfunctionality is noticed in such teams because there is ambiguity in leadership like i said they are from different departments but they belong to the same hierarchical level so there arises an ambiguity as who will be taking the leadership however such teams are basically capable of managing complex tasks they are actually known for managing complex tasks but there is an ambiguity right and uh, they they face dysfunctionality like dysfunctional issues is there in such kind of teams they tackle complex projects and accelerate task completion and they are dynamic plus creative in producing the ideas like i said they are from the same level but different departments next we have the virtual teams virtual team like the name suggests uh, remote uh, remotely connected and these teams exhibit higher participation because the physical presence of leader is not there the leader is not physically present right so they are more connected they the there is encouraged participation in this in these kinds of team relies on digital technology unite virtual members to work towards common goals and stay connected and informed regardless of the physical locations this we this we have seen a lot during work from home yes ppt is not working right and i have not uh, written everything also like i i don't know how we will go ahead with this just give me a moment i'll check how we, okay i have uh, turned off the video and it's working great so i think there is some problem with the network so i've just turned on of the audio uh, video okay so i hope you are clear with the three types of teams problem solving temporary temporary teams but they are actually helpful in the times of crisis like lokesh has also been mentioning the technical teams yes uh, few examples like i said during uh, time of covid we had we have we had to switch to a complete uh, online mode to get the work done right we could not have completely shut down so yes cross functional team same uh, hierarchical level but different teams virtual as the name suggests remotely connected like uh, digital technology and unite through virtual uh, unite virtual members to working towards a common goal and stay connected and informed regardless of their physical locations yes it's working now i have just switched off the videos again it's okay so i have a quick question for all of you cross functional teams are formed to solve complex problems is it true or false a or b we discussed three types of teams right okay who said it's true okay cross functional teams are formed to solve complex problems okay so i think we uh, maybe you did not get the concept right then i think okay no, we have to explain it ma'am yes see we understood the types of team right problem solving team these are temporary teams for example teams that are formed to uh, actually resolve a certain temporary issue an, uh, an issue which is temporary in nature and might revive in the long run we'll be reviving in the long run for example like uh, the very recent example of covid we can take where we all had to work remotely right we had to work and uh, stay connected but uh, we could not have completely gone into an off mode right we had to work so considering then the laptops were given to the employees so that they could work from home 
uh, the necessary uh, things were given like equipments whatever they required if they required a speaker if they required uh, a complete desktop the entire setup was given to them then uh, you had phones headset everything so it was uh, basically a uh, that issue arise and we had to resolve it right so such teams help in resolving such issues when we talk of cross functional like cross functional simply means that the uh, employees the members of this team will be from uh, the same hierarchy like if we say managers so all managers if if in uh, if, if if i could relate it to the education sector if i could say assistant professors then all assistant professors will be there but from different organization so someone who could be from management someone could be from uh, the education english so uh, different uh, departments different subjects but dealing with the same concern now why why such teams are formed because we want more brainstorming part we want these teams to actually uh, come up with a new idea a brainstorm and come up with a new strategy to help in resolving an issue such teams help in uh, carving out solutions which are complex which actually need to, to be tackled which which are kind of creative in nature which are dynamic and they help in accelerating increasing the task completion rate right and the virtual like the name suggests virtual remote remotely connected your physical presence is not that important but you're remotely connected your physical in, uh, irrespective of wherever you are irrespective of the location you are still connected to each other so these are the three types of teams that i have explained i hope it's clear now yes yes ma'am thank you ma'am okay thank you and uh, the question that oh, was asked was that do cross functional teams help in resolving complex issues exactly true they do help in resolving complex issues right cross functional teams are formed to solve complex problems 6 to 10 members are selected from various functional areas of management to constitute cross functional teams now how does team dynamic actually affect performance when i talk of team dynamics how is it affecting your performance first of all let's take an example of a classroom you are a teacher you have designed your lesson plan you have divided your uh, uh, the modules into different like for example in the entire week you will be discussing these many lectures and why do you do so for your convenience for the convenience of your students because you want to impart and deliver your lectures in the most uh, effective manner you want it to be an effective a dynamic environment that has to be created within the classroom so that your learners have a lot of information lot of insights from your session now when this happens when you are when you are a good teacher a facilitator you are mentoring well your students know you then uh, you are actually you are actually praised your work is appreciated when all this happens in a way you are building the uh, image of the organization when you are working well because employees play an important role employees are an integral part of any organization it is it won't be any wrong to say that uh, that employees are crucial for any organization and if and the more efficient you are the more you are adding to the bottom line the more you are adding to the revenue of the organization profitability that is what it means so when i say that you being an educator you being a teacher when you are delivering your sessions well you are actually uh, attracting more and more students and then obviously in a way it's resulting in the image of the organization image of your school or any educational institution you are associated with so profitability is number one that is the bottom line either the profit or the loss and the more you work in a team for example you are going to be absent for a particular session uh, you can de definitely coordinate with your peers you can coordinate with your uh, colleagues as and how we can swap the lectures so it all depends upon how you are dealing with how you are communicating well right employees happiness the longer you stay in the organization the staff retention the lesser is your absenteeism the lesser is your absconding nature increased uh, is the stable workforce right 
the more the stability the more the organization is known because for example tata consultancy services it's quite known for its uh, <clears throat> employee retention why because they actually consider that employee first they consider that employee is also important right so all these things uh, are interlinked they, they're interdependent they in a way affect the entire performance individual performance you being an individual contributor and you being uh, and you being con you you as a contributor to the organization's brand image the overall reputation of the organization so when we say effective team what makes a team effective number one is trust undoubtedly you have to have that faith when somebody is putting in that faith in you putting in that uh, trust in you that yes you will be able to do it so you have to live up to it that expectation when they have on you live up to it synergy as the name suggests synergy is nothing but unity harmony it is one plus one is not two but one plus one is eleven like uh, the power of being together the power of understanding the differences and rather and despite all the odds you are working together definitely there has to be clarity in terms of goals and I said earlier also that well-defined roles, the roles and responsibility, the ownership has to be well-defined, well-distributed. And there should be freedom of expression. You should have that comfort level of expressing yourself because if you have that fear of being judged, you will not be able to express yourself. When you fear that, oh, I will be judged I will never express myself. I'll always be, you know, an introvert. I, I'll always have that inhibition in sharing things with my teammates when I have that fear. So that is why we always promote and in inculcating this habit of empathy, habit of active listening, because we do not want to be judged unnecessarily. We want to increase more and more rationality when it comes to the workplace because we spend seven to eight hours. So we need to have that ability to express without being judged. And definitely results, the ultimate uh, the ultimate goal that you have when you work in a team, you have to uh, achieve your deadlines. You have to work in a stipulated time frame, and you have to help in completion of the task, no matter what it is, and effective communication, your goals, your uh, your uh, objectives, everything should be communicated well and put across. The, all these things actually make up, make a team which is act effective in nature. Okay, so I have one question for you. Which of the following is not a benefit of teamwork? I hope we are on this, we, we are clear because there is uh, no rocket science to whatever I've spoken so far. It's been very simple. We're just trying to understand team, different types of team. We've understood that team is all about together. Everyone achieves more. We want to understand the essence of team, right? And the I hope the story made it a little clear that how we can use each other's skill rather than uh, putting the other person down, right? No, it says which of the following is not a benefit of teamwork. Don't look at that uh, cut which is there on solutions. Yeah. It is actually a part of the PPT. Okay. Exactly. Right. Uh, Karthik, reread the question once. Okay. Reread. It says not. Not. Absolutely. D. Which of the following is not a benefit of teamwork? Improved solutions to quality problems. It is uh, it is a positive aspect. It is an effective part. Improved ownership of solutions. Like I said, like I said, we are, we have to take ownership responsibility, right? Improved communications is a benefit of teamwork. Decline integration is not a benefit of teamwork. Again, the slide is. <clears throat> So D is the correct answer for this. I hope by far we are clear. We have understood how things work. 
how things can actually become more beautiful become more uh, interesting and enjoyable if you learn to work together learn to work together it's not going to the next slide okay yes improve solutions to quality problem okay i'll just read the line in bold a uh, team with uh, a team with teamwork also faces fewer problems in the future okay now i want to understand it's an open question tell me is teamwork a leadership skill do you feel that it's a leadership skill how many of you feel that it's a leadership skill and why can you tell me how is teamwork a leadership skill can you can any one of you tell me how is teamwork a leadership skill exactly getting things done is not easy from others cooperation very good very good yes absolutely very good collaboration is very you so you remember the yesterday's lecture good good you remember yesterday's session very good so i have got some really good answers and you all are correct yes teamwork is a leadership skill why would i work for you why would i uh, if you give me a task why should i do it for you right so getting things done from other is also an art nobody easily will work for you right so yes it's a leadership skill and you tend to understand things you tend to understand your people within the course of time and for that you have to understand a lot of things you have to understand the art of communication you have to understand how important it is to uh, to get a feedback how important it is to put your thoughts across your team members how important it is to uh, yourself first of all yourself be that discipline so that you want if you want your people to agree to you right if for example if i am late if i come to come to the office late will my people listen to me because they'd be like khud to late aati hai right so to you know it's very difficult i've realized that getting work done you needs a lot of patience you have to be really patient you have to uh, be that absorbing that fine uh, it's a mistake it can be overlooked it can be corrected we can things can be discussed so it's a task to be very honest and again the slide is not moving ahead great okay just give me a minute i'll absolutely exchange of ideas empathy is very true i'm trying to move on to the next slide just a moment okay now i'm going to talk about the teamwork skills communication skills communication has basically been derived from the word communicare means uh, to share communis or communicare which is these are latin words which basically means to share to exchange your ideas in very simple communication process there is a receiver there is a sender there are certain elements which might hinder which might act as obstruction during the entire communication process but how do you acknowledge that your message has been received now for example if i take the example of the session when i ask a question i see the chat box i see my replies so i believe my message has been well received that is why i get an acknowledgement in the form of answers so i receive answers from you right medium we have online medium we connected through the online mode the virtual mode right so we are a virtual team and active listening active listening and listening very different things if you remember in school when our teacher used to ask us to read from a particular page there was there were certain students who were kind of lost they did not know what to read where to read because they were not listening they were just sleeping with their eyes open right so active listening is really important if you want to reply well if you want to respond well so you have to be actively involved in the entire session delegating and motivating abilities see self motivation motivating yourself like i said in the very starting manifestation having that clarity making your goals tangible is really important why because you actually want success and growth for yourself you want to learn a lot i i want you to have key takeaways from this session i want you to learn i want you to ask other people to join my session i want you to encourage this and i want that each one of you grows beautifully and i always feel that my students 
my audience has a lot to learn a lot to take for a lot, many key takeaways from the session and you actually use it you are actually able to implement it so i'll be really successful when when i get to see you all of you like using my techniques uh, giving my examples i'll be more than happy if i see you guys doing that so that will that will be a successful uh, successful uh, day time everything for me integrity there should be honesty responsibility you have to take ownership of the task for example if you have committed a mistake there's no there's no problem in accepting it but you do not have to be you know quite repetitive with your mistakes you don't have to repeat your mistakes that is something very um, you are actually uh, uh, disappointing the person who trusted you uh, in committing the same mistake again and again right uh, committing mistakes is good until unless they are not repeated it actually disappoints and demotivates the person who has put in that faith and trust in you adaptability now adaptability basically means see you will not get a home like environment when you start working in in an office you will not get somebody who will bring tea on your table okay there are organizations which do that but still for example there they won't be everyone who will be at your service all the time right you have to earn that you have that home like environment will not be there so you have to adapt yourself you have to understand okay there is no water cooler in my organization i will carry two bottles that's okay now i cannot keep on cribbing about the thing that there is no water cooler or this is missing there is no canteen i'll carry extra food i'll think of an alternative how can i uh, not uh, actually wane about it not actually uh, look at the Uh, side which is demotivating rather than looking at the side which is beautiful wherein i can add more to my knowledge right now confident work ethics what do you mean by work ethics work ethics basically a belief that work and diligence have a moral benefit an inherent uh, ability the virtue the values to strengthen character and individual abilities simple it's it's your um, your work ethics basically uh, for example the way you dress for the uh, dress for the organization like the way you carry yourself it speaks volumes then how regular you are to the organization your attendance it also tells that whether you are interested in the job role or not or you're just passing time <clears throat> that is another thing so uh, having that uh, inherent ability the value to strengthen your character your individuality highlighting your individuality right now if i had to quote few example few example of ethical organizations i would say that tata steel is one wipro is one now why because they think of their actions with a think uh, that when when whenever they do any action they also think of its impact its impact on its stakeholders impact on the employees ki maine jo kaam kiya how is it going to affect my employees how is it going to affect my stakeholders people who are interested in my organization stakeholders who are interested in the performance of the organization right how is it going to uh, in uh, cultivate an integrity cultivate integrity so this is what comes into the picture when i talk of ethics your values your moral beliefs okay now stages of team development stages of team development simple like very simple i would say that forming storming norming performing and adjourning these are the five stages given by given in the year 1965 by bruce tuckman it was given by bruce tuckman in the year 1965 is basically uh, says about the first stage which is the forming second one is storming norming fourth one is performing and last one is adjourning in permanent teams what you have is you have stages up to performing but in case you have temporary teams you have an adjourning stage and adjourning stage basically means that there is a hiatus a hiatus is me it means a temporary stop right and then the teams might revive again the uh, the uh, teams might form again so i'll just read out uh, the basic points in this the key points in this it is characterized by uncertainty right the team opportunities and challenge will be understood will be met 
the yellow highlighted part talks about the part of the leader like the leader is more of a consultant more of a supervisor who will facilitate the entire team building process right and the team has and the leader has to understand the requirements of the training now when the when this forming stage like is over how do you understand the forming stage is over when your team members will consider themselves as a part of the part of the group when they start to think that we are not individuals but we are we have formed a team we are no more individuals but we are individuals working in a team together right next stage is the storming stage now what what do you understand by intra group conflict anybody intra group intra intra group means anyone has to say anything intra group conflict absolutely within the group simple yes anyone wants to speak yes please go ahead yes it is within the group this group it talks about uh, conflicts or some sort of um, inability to understand things in within the team within the members exactly intra group right intra means within now in this what happens is that members tend to focus on details rather than issues and comp compete for influence for example there are members in a team they they have ideas to share right they have ideas to share now they will find that whose idea should be considered whose idea should be considered that is intra group conflict conflict that i should be given the uh, lead or xyz should be given the lead right so this is the storming stage the team leader is basically promoting uh, how to deal with that stress be a little more tolerant be a little more patient so this is where the leader comes in the picture he, ha he because he knows it the leader understands that okay it's it's a part and parcel of how teams are formed so he will promote encourage patience and guide them to the goals of the organization because when there is a conflict in this uh, for this particular thing in the team the team is not saying anything wrong they are also fighting for something which is in a way for the betterment of the team right so the leader understands this and he only promotes how you can deal with this how you have to be a little more patient and calm to the through the entire process and during this process there will be clarity in hierarchy of leadership within the group you will be able to understand who stands where we will that we will get that clarity during this stage now next we have the norming stage norming stage is like as the name suggests the first of all is the third stage and it's basically constructing norms adjusting to conform uh, adjusting to comply comply karna to the norms of the organization and this basically helps in increasing the cohesiveness cohesiveness ka matlab hota hai to fit together fit together in the group right so close relationships and cohesiveness i hope you are able to correlate this when you are working with your friends when you are working with your colleagues when you are working with your peers and seniors first you form then you storm you have certain sort of conflicts but still you have to be a little patient you have to understand then the norming stage when you talk of norming stage you are fitting together as a group right there is that proximity there is that uh, closeness in terms of the relationship okay the team relationship grows and individual characteristics are understood and appropriately utilized the team leader here also encourages participation don't forget that uh, the team leader will never ever feel in leaving any person instead they focus on how to encourage or motivate the other person so leaving is not an option instead encouraging and stressing on how to be a little more patient the stage is complete when the group structure solidifies and the group has assimilated a common set of expectations of what defines correct member be behavior so you basically start to understand each other better you are you are you have more clarity in terms of goals you have more clarity in terms of who's good with what and what kind of task should be allocated to your team members so that whenever a project comes and the deadline is there and deadline is really stringent the deadline is really strict so you can meet it within the stipulated time frame that is the norming stage you are complying you are coming together your understanding right 
next is the performing stage if you have a permanent team perm for permanent teams you usually this is the last stage wherein you have high levels of loyalty participation motiv motivation and group decision making and uh, personal growth is seen sharing is encouraged throughout membership and the group energy has moved from getting to know and understand each other to performing the task at and at hand resolving all the, all the conflicts keeping all those things aside you have increased your decision making capabilities you have understood each other's strengths and weaknesses and you are now working together in in a way which is desirable in a way which will help you alleviate uh, the in elevate the overall performance right performing stage now when i say adjourning stage like i said in the, in the beginning that it's basically adjourning adjourning as a uh, as it suggests to dissolve like dissolve for uh, for a short period of time and this is basically for temporary groups and uh, these were the five stages now key takeaways a team is a group of people working together for a common objective uh, in your team like if i talk of an organization uh, if there, there is a finance team there is an hr team marketing team so they have certain objectives like the marketing team has to bring in leads the marketing team has to uh, promote their products right now if i talk of the same thing in an educational setup there are different departments so accordingly you have to uh, understand what session to deliver when or uh, if you want to um, conduct a conference a seminar how to do that a paper presentation uh, a paper presentation conference how to do that so how to uh, include your students also in that so uh, aligning uh, your students with that particular goal so they also tend to form a team with you and then uh, we have understood the five stages which was uh, given by bruce tuckman in 1965 and leaders must keep an idea on the changing needs of the team and adapt accordingly in every stage we saw that the leader had a different role to play initially the leader focused on how uh, he will understand the needs of the organization right next it it moved on to a more encouraging role like more of somebody who is promoting and encouraging how you have to show that quality of perseverance how to how you have to be patient and how you do not have to stress throughout this entire process because conflicts and clashes and some sort of miscommunication assumption might be a part of it but what ultimately uh, makes the entire journey more beautiful is being together and despite all the mismatch despite all the clashes you are together okay now moving on to the next phase of uh, the presentation till now if you have any questions any things to share regarding team or the five stages or anything in the particular you can go ahead we can discuss and then we will move on to motivation wherein i have two theories to share with you and then uh, anything like anything by far like you want to share please go ahead i hope you have understood team different types the the different stages of team development i hope it's clear any doubt so far any input from your end anything that you would like to add please go ahead or should i move on move ahead with the next uh, topic so the next topic starts with the uh, okay usually that's great if it's clear and if you have any uh, anything in uh, anything in particular you can always share next uh, the question is what motivates you to go to your workplace what motivates you what is that motivating factor anyone or one by one i want to listen to everybody like if you're a student you can share me what motivates you to reach your goal if please share a goal with me the goal that you have that where do you see yourself in the coming year for this 2023 do you have any goal in particular please go ahead let's discuss because motivation is not something that can be really taught actually it is uh, the theories are there the theories will actually help you gain that clarity but uh, what important what is important is you actually through these sessions align your uh, life your uh, day to day activities to the long term goal right so 2023 3 months have already gone by in the wink of an eye seriously 3 months have passed 
great all the best for that lokesh so uh, i would also like to know that uh, you want to be an assistant professor that's really good so what are uh, okay great so recognition needs great so i was about to discuss abraham maslow's hierarchy and uh, herzberg's two factor theory so definitely recognition is one really important crucial aspect of these two models these two theories okay so i want to so for uh, anita i am clear that recognition is one factor one motivator great for lokesh he wants to um be an assistant professor that is goal very good okay so studying well you are basically studying well you are performing well so that you uh, be an assistant professor great anyone else you can always turn on your audio to so that we can interact make it more interactive and my ppt is causing a lot of problem by the way so very good yes Mot until unless you motivate yourself you are not strong enough how will you be able to you know uh, encourage the other person also like in the starting i said uh, be the energy you want to attract and be prepared to achieve it right be the energy you want to attract and be prepared to get it so if if you actually want uh, if you actually want to attract that uh, good thing for you you have to you have to yourself also be that motivated be positive be encouraged no worries alice we can uh, we can catch up tomorrow at 6 tomorrow i'll uh, be there at 6 only today i had some work i was that's why it got bit delayed yes okay see you tomorrow uh, next so yes so uh, there are different motivation factors thank you so much thank no but uh, we are still left with uh, some more slides but the problem is the slide is not moving ahead either i stop share wait okay can you all see the ppt just type yes or no in the can you all see the ppt okay great so i'll not turn on the slide show because there's some problem with the slide show so i'll just discuss it like this now what is motivation motivation are like uh, motivation as the name suggests that you are motivated to do something you have that uh, uh, drive you have that force to just a moment please just a moment okay thank you thanks okay so what uh, now i'll just explain the few terminologies associated with motivation the forces that the individual account for level direction persistence of efforts like i said throughout the seven days remember to be consistent and not just for one okay one hour is great you are being consistent but apart from this also try to imbibe whatever you are learning whatever key takeaways whatever key points you have from these entire sessions to imbibe to utilize like like i said uh, write down your goals give them a tangible uh, shape give them that shape so that when you ever, whenever you go through them you are able to achieve it reward whenever you work you actually think of a reward how well you will be rewarded now these rewards can be extrinsic or intrinsic now extrinsic when we say it's external intrinsic internal like extrinsic rewards you are working for example you want to win a competition you attach some sort of monetary benefits to it right intrinsic is something internal like you run a marathon you run a race but you do not have any such uh, uh, any such uh, what should i say reward associated to it or any other uh, means of uh, associated to it right it comes out naturally it is kind of inherent it's kind of inherent so intrinsic internal in nature right 
when uh, whenever you work whenever uh, you have a target to achieve why we at attach certain sort of incentives to it because when you attach some sort of monetary benefits to your uh, task you tend to achieve it a little uh, better because you have that monetary uh, benefit associated to it right so motivation is a person's needs or desires or wants that urges you know the person behavior to achieve the goal if you want if you have a goal to achieve you actually attach some sort of rewards to it a work outcome of positive value to the individual right now i will discuss about abraham maslow's hierarchy maslow's hierarchy of need this was given by abraham maslow in the year 1943 and this was given in the paper a theory of human motivation and it it was explained in the uh, journal psychological review and this theory was basically used to explain psychology of human motivation i hope you are getting it it was basically to understand what motivates an individual what is actually the source of motivation how can i understand that my employee working in an organization is motivated so it basically is given in a pyramid shape starting with the lower levels and moving on to the higher levels now these two levels physiological and safety they comprise the basic needs when we talk of esteem and social they will help they will uh, uh, they amount to the uh, psychological needs and then the final is self fulfillment however this version has been extended to self transcendence now discussing these in detail the first one that is the physiological simple roti kapda makan right the basic needs that you have and along with this intimacy intimacy as in it helps in the propagation of species now when i talk of the second one that is the safety security needs is the second level now uh, these basically arise because an individual wants to control and uh, their lives when you are working you want job security you want social security because you want to lead a life which is more secure in terms of finances in terms of health that is why people go for health insurance right health and wellness and financial security safety against any sort of accidents and in injury so that is why you have uh, medical benefits why because we want that safety in terms of our finances in terms of our health so that is why we work for health insurance we look for a good stable job we look for safer neighborhoods we look at look at our savings account so both physiological and safety needs they amount for the basic needs these are the basic needs the first two levels now moving on to the next level that is the social level the social level talks about love belongingness acceptance your family relationships the community groups the religious uh, uh, the religious uh, the religions that you associate yourself with friendships emotional relationships so all these come under social Uh, this is basically done so that you want to avoid any sort of loneliness anxiety in today's time we see a lot of uh, mental health issues raising because people you know they are believing a lot in that hashtag of self love which in a way is turning out to be little, little disastrous self love is good but you need to understand that you have to have certain healthy relationships also to survive in the long run how many of you agree to this actually that you uh should have you know not many but at least two or three people whom you can rely on whom you can uh, go up to whom you can spend a good time with and without any fear of being judged you can speak your heart out to them how many of you feel that it's really important to have such healthy relationships or it's better to uh, keep things to yourself all the time even i yes exactly even i feel that you have to have at least i wouldn't say that many but at least few handful people so that you can go up to you can definitely uh, discuss your things with them the entire day with them with your family with your friends you you need to have those relationships so gradually you you climb these uh, levels right the social one and then when we move on to the fourth one which is the esteem esteem level it basically talks about your professional activities your academic accomplishments your esteem your recognition like uh, anita said that she is happy that the recognition that she's got is motivating her 
absolutely when you are appreciated when your work is being appreciated that drives you that uh, that actually makes you uh, go to the to the workplace right however you will be sulking when uh, Uh, you feel that uh, there is some sort of uh, conflict or there is some sort of uh, you know your work has been questioned or there is some problem related to the task that you submitted you will actually have that reluctance in going to the office however when you feel that you know you suggested an idea or uh, your your task was appreciated your task was uh, actually uh, recognized your contribution to the team was recognized so you actually feel more motivated in going right if you if you do any task and it's uh, it's recognized by your by the people around you why would you not go for example if somebody is good at uh, a particular sport right so definitely people tend to miss that person that oh he is not here she is not here she plays she plays badminton so well she does yoga so well so you know you you have that when you have a certain uh, traits of yours being highlighted in your absence you actually feel motivated uh, in going when you are appreciated so self esteem definitely your hobbies your uh, professional activities your accomplishments come into this come into this level so psychological needs uh, is basically the sum of esteem and social and as you grow you basically you, your urge for uh, meeting your urge for moving more towards psychological needs increases and self actualization is at the peak of it which basically means which talks about you know uh, the fulfillment of your potential utilizing your potential to the maximum in the most simplest or loosely if uh, i could say it is basically the full use of your potential full use of your talents and capabilities that is self fulfillment i have one question for all of you do you think age plays a role yes self actualization self realization these are different names that have been given to this level like you are using your potential to the fullest when i say self actualization accomplishing accomplishment when uh, i'll tell you deficiency needs also there are two types of needs actually <clears throat> exactly okay now kartik says that no uh, age does not play a role in this pyramid i want you to elaborate why it does not play a role ma'am uh, regarding self actualization uh i i consider two types of ages one is physical age something which is uh, calculated from the date of birth another one is emotional age which cannot be calculated from the age of date of birth a 16 year old boy or a girl could be having a maturity of uh, 50 60 year old person so in in history we have come across such uh, examples we can take the example of uh, alexander or swami vivekananda or many such examples can be seen who whose behavior attitude and others were beyond their physical age so that's my point of view absolutely even i agree i when i was studying this uh, pyramid a little closely when i was trying to understand it a question struck my mind and i just checked that does age play a role when i talk of uh, need hierarchy because is it important for me to turn 60 to be recognized or can i be recognized at a age at, at an age half of it so that was my concern so yes it says that age does not play a role exactly because like karthik and lokesh absolutely right swami vivekananda if i am if i am not wrong he died at a very young age i think 30 if i am not wrong please correct me if i am wrong so they were so young uh, even uh, uh, chhasi ki rani right they these people okay 39 okay so yes these people have been so young but the work that they have done it's um, worthy of all the appreciation and uh, they have sent up they have actually set up a benchmark they have actually set up uh, a benchmark which is so difficult to achieve okay he was 39 okay i thought 30 okay 29 fine thanks for correcting so uh, age actually does not play and when i was uh, 
trying to understand it says that uh, 36 is could be the age when an individual is accepted uh, when an individual is expected to reach the self fulfillment stage so this might vary from individual to individual this is this is what i also believe and uh, coming back to the pyramid shape the lower level like i said basically contribute to the basic needs and the higher levels are more complex in nature right as people progress their needs become more of psychological and social more of uh, psychological needs like uh, the esteem the social needs they tend to incline or align themselves to these needs a little more two types of needs are there there deficiency needs and the growth needs when i talk of deficiency needs these are basically due to some sort of deprivation there is some lack of satisfaction that is why these needs arise these could be the physiological safety social and esteem needs but when we talk of the growth needs that is self fulfillment need the self actualization need it does not stem from any lack but it rather is the desire to grow when you have actually achieved all these levels you want to grow because you have understood you you have the basic needs with you you are working more on yourself you are basically working on Uh, realizing your potential your abilities now there is an addition to it which talks of self transcendence which is basically the quality of being going beyond the natch the normal limits the normal boundaries and rising above a superior state understanding that you know there is a holistic level of uh, human consciousness holistic as in a whole if we all know that just all theory which says that the whole is greater than the parts so that complete your uh, uh, the highest level of uh, if i could say a being your highest level of being so that is the transcendence levels which talk about it is an addition to the the hierarchy that we have and uh, moving on to the next theory i'll read it out there is i'll just uh, explain it to you which is hersberg's two factor theory hersberg's two factor theory was given in the year 1968 by frederick erik hersberg and uh, this theory basically talks about two factors the job satisfaction and dissatisfaction factors the job satisfaction factors are the hygiene factors and the job uh, dissatisfaction factors are motivational factors now in a way we think that these are opposite to each other however they are in a way related to each other there are two set of factors that influence motivation in the workplace and enhancing satisfaction or hindering it the job satisfaction levels and job dissatisfaction levels now how to understand them the hygiene factors basically comprises of your salary benefits your job security the work environment these factors basically help in decreasing your dissatisfaction these factors help in decreasing your dissatisfaction levels it it could be the company policies the rules and regulations in the organization when we talk of motivators these basically help in uh, more of your own progress the achievement the recognition for accomplishment your creativity your advancement through the entire uh, career uh, the work is interesting or not your relationship so a brief uh, about the hersberg uh, two factor theory which basically uh, discusses about why an employee should be retained how you can retain him or her and how you can uh, can avoid that uh, uh, employee from quitting the job right so increasing the retention rate how you can work on your motivating factors how you can work on the hygiene factors so this was all about uh, abraham maslow and hersberg's motivation theory there has been some problem with the ppt throughout but i hope uh, you were able to understand uh, the entire session any doubts we can discuss related to two theories or related to anything that you want to give more as an input you felt is missing or you felt should be added you can we can definitely discuss anybody most important motivation in organization internal or external anyone would like to answer this also yeah. right this, this is basically focusing on what is more important in terms of intrinsic and extrinsic like what motivates you yeah so anyone 
Karthik, do you have your inputs to this? What do you think? What kind of motivation is important, internal or external? Um, I think internal is uh, more important and uh, <laughs> correct, correct me if I'm wrong, external is a byproduct of internal motivation. That's what I feel. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, a very interesting question, I must say, like what kind of motivation is important? Uh, I feel that both in a way play a crucial role, be it intrinsic, be it extrinsic, be the... Uh, be the external factors. Sometimes I feel that yes, monetary benefits do play a crucial role in a task that has been given to me. And sometimes I feel that, okay, no worries, I'll do it for my own happiness. And uh, like Karthik said, it, yes, it's kind of a byproduct, yes. So I also, I, I feel that uh, both play an integral role. It depends on what task has been given to you. And uh, it depends, I cannot choose one. Because, yes, I cannot choose one between uh, internal and external. At times when I feel that, uh, for example, I worked with an NGO. Now, when I worked with an NGO, there was no monetary benefit involved. But I just worked with an NGO because I wanted to. I wanted to associate myself with a noble cause. I have, uh, I did participate in marathons and the, like make pink it on. I did run for one. So, these, uh, these tasks that I was associated with, I... I participated in had no monetary benefits but I did it for my own happiness however when I go to my workplace I do believe that yes there is salary I and I will get that salary on the first week of the month so it depends on what kind of task I'm doing it and till how level I can be uh, be charitable or up to how level can I be generous so it depends to me both are important and anyone else has their own uh, input, so I would like to listen to them. Yes. But I agree with Karthik also. It's really important, like, like yesterday we were discussing, uh, people prefer uh, working with, uh, with bosses who are uh, actually more cordial, uh, who are actually understanding in nature. And rather than, you know, they do not, do not want a pay raise. They would rather decline a pay raise if their leadership is not uh, cooperative. Right. So we have uh, understood this. So yes, uh, in a way, Karthik is also right. So that perspective varies from person to person. But I feel that a proper combination, a proper balance of two would yield the desired results. <clears throat> Any other question? This question was really very interesting. These questions actually make me think and uh, put to use the theory that I have actually gone through and uh, discussed with you and if you have any doubts pertaining to these two theories these two theories basically highlighted on uh, what what are the factors we need to understand while uh, an employee is working with the organization what is it that is motivating an employee what is it that motivates an individual to strive for success the motivating factors, the the surrounding, the the different uh, policies that the organization comes up with, the changes the organization does, so all of that. If you all remember, uh, we there was a time when we had manual attendance, right? Uh, manual attendance was taken, but now we have biometric. However, there was reluctance towards biometric, but still uh, people have started adapting to it. Right. So there are factors which influence an employee's motivation at workplace, but there are things which we cannot do much to change about. Any other question? So I think tomorrow we'll be discussing about emotional intelligence and empathy. And uh, for this, I think that uh, uh, understanding this, I will try to bring in uh, something which will definitely help us give a closer look of how we can actually be more empathetic and how we can actually incorporate these things in our day-to-day uh, -day life in our professional world so this is it from my side and lastly i would like to say is that if you live with passion you will always be happy so try and uh, uh, think of new ways of learning try and think of adding uh, more to your knowledge try and think of uh, going for a hobby 
and uh, you know working on improving yourself being a better version of yourself so work on that and if you get the time you can definitely watch that video that i shared about the hair and the tortoise which is a very interesting video four minute video won't take much of your time and it talks about how we can work on each other's skill and work together rather than you know just competing and uh, showing that you, how better you are than the other person so yes thank you so much everyone I think Pramod sir is not here today. Okay, everyone, I'll see you all tomorrow, six o'clock. Thank you, thank you, everyone, thank you. Okay, guys, bye. See you.